are the challenges of playing quarterback in this league? Now, one of the things that I noticed as I was doing some research was that you only have one offensive line woman, and they have two defensive line women. That's from the website. Am I wrong? Uh, well, it's three on three. So I have a center and two O-line, and then they have their middle linebacker and two D-line. So it's evenly matched at the line. But one of the things with being quarterback on a 7-7 seven and seven arena-style football is just the speed of the game. It's a much smaller field. You're moving a lot faster, and you have boundaries. You have walls that will stop you whether you want them to or not. <laughs> What's your arm strength? Like, can you get the ball halfway down the field, all the way down the field? We play with a junior size football. I'm going to just throw that out there because when I say how long I can throw the ball, people are like, no way. I could, I mean, three quarters of the field. I think I could check it. Okay, so you're talking about 40 yards. Yeah. I mean, that's, no, that's a good throw. You only have 20 players on a team, mm -hmm. 14 on the active roster. Um, how many girls play both sides of the ball? I almost said how many girls go both, both ways. ways. Yeah, but see, I cleaned that up. Thank you. How many girls play on both sides of the ball? We have only two or three. It depends on where our third girl, if she's in at center or O-line, or O-line, but we have two for sure. It's Allie Alberts and myself. We both play safeties, and then Allie's my number one receiver. Nice. So it's like you, you guys are like kind of joined at the hip. Oh, yeah. We, we're tough chicks, and we love to be back there at safety, maybe blitzing an A-gap, maybe falling back looking for the ball. Now, is this your biggest rivalry? I would say so, yes. LA, LA won three championships, and we came and dethroned them last year by winning in order to advance in the playoffs, like you said. So it's, it's just been huge, and this is definitely our biggest game. Now, who do you like showing up from the other team more than anybody else? Uh, like, if I were to say, who's the biggest jag off on the LA? What is the LA? The LA what? It's the LA Temptation. The Temptations. Oh, what a terrible name. Like, you got it, Chicago Bliss. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, who's the biggest jag off on the LA Temptations? I just, <laughs> I wouldn't call her a jag off. I don't think you can call girls jag offs. Well, you know, here's my problem is that's like kind of my signature question. Now, like Mike Dicka said, you know, Terrell Owens was the biggest jag off in the NFL. So, Ooh. who's the, uh, I don't know. Okay. 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 I, I have to have an offensive and a defensive jag off, I guess, because. Ashley Salerno, I'm a safety, so Ashley Salerno, they're a quarterback. I'm a quarterback, so she's just a jag off. She's talented, but nah. And then on their defense, me being a quarterback, is their middle linebacker, Monique Axiola. I mean, she talks a big game, and she's not that good. Nice, nice, very good. What advice would you have for young girls that want to get into the LFL? Well, you know, I look back at what I did growing up, to get to this point, and I was involved in everything athletic. I mean, any sport you could think of. I really didn't play football until I got involved here. I would play, you know, catch with the boys at the park, and I would watch football with my dad, but I never thought there was an opportunity. So now knowing that these girls growing up can have that opportunity, just study the game. I mean, keep, keep in sports, be athletic, get outside with the boys, be rough and tough, and watch football. There you go. It's an endorsement for all of football. Girls out there, work hard, be a, grow up and be beautiful, eat right, stay healthy, and learn to play football. Come out and play! How hard is it to manage a team with only 14 roster spots? I mean, that's got to make it tough. It's difficult. Um, we carry 20, but only 14 dress for a game. Uh, when I coached Arena, we had a 30-man roster, which uh, 25 traveled and 21 played. So I'm a little used to it, uh, trying to juggle the roster of inactive inactives, but it, it, you never get used to it. How, how much does injury play a part in that? I mean, that has to be really the key factor is, is who's injured and that's who's not dressing when you're that limited. Absolutely it does. Um, Matchups, that's another thing that comes into play. Uh, like tonight we're dressing six linemen and eight skill, we call them skill players, versus seven and seven. We think we need more skill players, but injuries definitely. Um, with this game, there's not as many injuries as in the outdoor game or the arena game, the men's game. The girls don't hit as hard, uh, so there's not that physical impact that there is in the, uh, the men's game. So the injury factor is a little less. Is it? Well, that's got to be a good thing. I mean, because that, like, you know, I'm looking at those uniforms and I'm thinking, you know, just like the muscle injuries, you know, because it doesn't look like it, it provides the support that a lot of the 
football equipment that we're used to seeing provides. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And but also it has a uh, a positive side of it that the girls don't have those helmets that the men wear. The men have turned those helmets into weapons. And you see the guys leading with their heads all the time now. That's something they're trying to get out of the uh, the game. The girls don't do that. Uh, they don't. Again, they don't have those helmets. You think back football back in you know the 50s and 60s and 70s. Guys weren't leading with their heads. The the advent of the modern football helmet has changed the way guys tackle so now with these girls wearing like the hockey helmets they don't lead with their heads so the injury is as far as head injuries are a lot less than they would be in the indoor or the outdoor game with the men what's your most memorable moment as the head coach of the bliss well obviously winning the championship last year it was uh something we had been striving for this is my uh, going into my fourth year with the league the first year we went undefeated, went to the championship game, lost in the championship game. I didn't come back the second season. The third season I came back. They'd already picked the team. They weren't very good. And then last year, obviously, we rebuilt the roster and we went to the championship and won it. Nice. That's That's got to be a lot of fun. And now this year, do you think with the roster as it is now, do you think you have a chance to repeat? Absolutely. We're the best team in the league. Um, I have no problem saying it. You know, we're, we loaded up. We got a couple of new rookies that came in. We got a... A nice addition from another team decided to join us. So we have a nice mix of veterans, uh, veteran core players from last year. We had a nice rookie recruiting class that came in. We're loaded. Nice. Now, who's the biggest Jagoff coach in the league? Oh, man. Uh, the, I would have to say myself. Come on and play! Now, um, when I was talking with your coach, he literally said you were the best center in the league and that you came down through free agency. That's kind of a rare thing in the LFL. Yeah, um, I was just committed to my job. I work for a junior hockey team in Green Bay, so I was very committed to that. I'm very involved, and I um, just didn't want to take off time from work to play football, trying to, you know, not what you know who you know, get out my name, and uh, I got the itch to play again, and I was trying to get in contact with my Green Bay coach, no response, no response, and then I got in contact with the Chicago coach, and um, the opportunity to play on a championship-bound team, like I knew the talent coming down here, it was just a real great opportunity, and I couldn't pass it up. Now, that was like kind of a big deal, you know, he had said that, you know, they were champions last year, and now getting the best center in the league, that kind of puts them over to the top. What defensive player do you like to take on as an offensive center? Um, I really enjoyed last year playing against Seattle just because it was gruesome, like just the dirtiest. And they, I think they lost their uh, middle linebacker, but it just is gruesome. And I, like the bloodier, the better, essentially, but minus the blood. I went through two uniform chops against them. Nice. So that's like, I mean, that's seriously some some violent, hard-hitting action. For, for sure. I mean, like, that's what we're all about, though. We aren't here to play pussy football. Like, we're seven on seven, full contact, full tackle football. Have you ever had any injuries? Um, fortunately enough, I have not. Knock on wood, and I'll probably have a torn ACL today that you just asked me that, and then you know who I'm going to be head hunting for. So hope you disguise well. No, oh, shit. You can find me at 1389. No, yeah, 1389 Floresta Vista. <laughs> I'd love to have hot women like you chase me. <laughs> Come on and play! Last year, you guys won the freaking championship. That was pretty kick ass. Yes, this year, you going to do it again? Um, it's already said. We already speaked it into existence. So Nice. Tell me about your total stats for last year. Well, the stats on the line are like ridiculous. Um I think I averaged like four point five touchdowns a game and like nine point five nine point six some yards a carry. Um, are you the type of back that can catch out the ball out of the backfield? Yes, I can. I showed that last season. I was really excited about that. So who's the biggest bitch in the A L F L? Come on. The biggest bitch. You mean by pounds or do you mean by attitude? I know who by attitude is. I think I'm sitting with her. Yeah. Well, as Chrissy, I would say that I am very humble and my mom raised me right. But as the Ferrari, I am the best mother running back in this league and ain't nobody ever going to take that spot. Back to Chrissy, honey. Psycho Babble, we have the best running back in the LFL oh, here. Excuse me. The best running back in the world. We have the best. I can't say that. Well, I am. Name one is the fe the best female running back of the world. You're sitting with okay, her. Okay, right I'll now. give you female. Thank you. All right. Okay, correct. Psycho babble. We are sitting here with the best female running back in the world. She's a starting running back for your world champion, Chicago Blitz. Blitz. 
See, you're gonna she's, get your She's she's whispering to me, and my I don't you know. All right, psycho babble. We are here with the. I forgot who the. We're here with, but Harris. yeah, I know you're Chris Del Harris, a Ferrari, yes. the best psycho babble. We're here with Chris Del Harris, the Ferrari, the fastest girl in the world, the fastest running back, excuse me, not the fastest girl because that would make me like Flojo, but the fastest running back in the world, the fastest LFL girl in the league. Thank you. Back to um, psycho babble. Thank you very much, psycho babble. Good night.